Okay, another lease to purchase, a lease option that involves a purchase. Uh, so the car manufacturer offers a lease to purchase, purchase option at 1.9% APR. Well, low interest rate, that catches you, right? At the end of this option, Christina can keep the vehicle by paying a depreciated value or walk away with the fee of $150. Okay, so buy the car at what it's worth or um, walk away but pay for $150. Uh, what is the monthly payment of the lease to purchase option? And what is the total cost of the purchase option if she walks away? Okay, so a lot of times, you know, when you go and buy a car in real life, they're going to give you those things. But what I like about this problem is it's making you calculate it. So everything that I've talked about in this lesson uh, gives you power to see where these numbers are coming from. So this is something that you're going to want to calculate and figure out, okay, um, what is this payment going to be? Are these numbers adding up? Is it, like, if it's not, then you need to ask questions like, okay, this is what I got. Like, where are you getting these numbers? Okay. And what I found out from me purchasing cars is they don't know. They just put it into the computer. They're like, it just comes out that way. And then you can be like, oh, no, I'm not paying that. Uh, I don't agree or whatever. And sometimes they'll bring down the price of the car or whatever. So these are all negotiating tactics that you can use just by knowing the math behind stuff. Okay. And if you can just do like relative amounts of money and have a ballpark of what the estimates would be, you know, and the salespeople will do this also. So um, if you start questioning their math on it, it makes even the finance people in the back room, which know more of the math than the salespeople, um, makes them nervous, okay? Especially when you know you can throw these figures out and about. So uh, rather than just computing stuff for, you know, the, the purpose of math, this is a good bargaining tool. All right, so let's see what they're asking for here. All right, so again, compounding periods, uh, we're gonna do for three years again, so um, that's going to be 36. All right. Um, <clears throat> our interest rate we know is 1.9%. Um, our principal investment uh, well, is the uh, value of the car. Uh, it's 23599 All right. Um, the payment, that's what we want to look for. Okay. What's this going to cost us a month to lease? All right. The future value, uh, we're doing it for three years, so that's going to be a negative $14,250. So the worth of the car after three years, okay, estimated. Um, and then, of course, uh, compounding months. Um, let me talk about compounding months. Um, so it didn't say the compounds. It's like said it in number one, but it didn't really say it throughout. Um, so as we saw in the earlier lessons um, when we did this unit, that compound does, the more it compounds, the more money it makes us in investments. So it also works the other way in debt. If they compound it more, it's going to be more uh, charged to you. Uh, but the thing is, between like your, your principal amount, your, um, your time, your interest rate, those will affect your prices much more than just the compounding periods. Okay, it affects it smallly. So if you don't know... Uh, just use 12 months. Okay, most things are compounded monthly, uh, but even if they aren't, if you use 12, it'll get you a good estimate to what you're trying to figure out. All right, so uh, if you don't know, just use use monthly. Okay, um, so let's figure out this payment going to our handy dandy calculator here. <clears throat> All right, so we got 36 months already. We need to change our interest rate. That's going to be a 1.9. All right, um, their future value, that's right. Uh, the payments is what we want to figure out and the price of the car. So everything's good. So I'm going to hit the payment. And there it is, um, $289.93. $289 um, so if I go over here, it's going to be a negative $289.93. All right, so... Um, that's our payment a month, and that's even better. All right, so let's see. Uh, which um, alternative should Christina choose? Okay, the loan, lease, uh, uh, the lease, or the purchase option. Okay, so basically loan versus lease. Um, but let's look at the two leasing op options just real quick. Um, so to kind of answer this question, you do a little math to it, right? So total cost analysis again. All right, so we've got 289 a month. All right, times the 36. All right, plus if we walk away, okay, so this one's gonna be if we walk. All right, so 289 a month times 36 months of doing that. Add the 150 because we're not gonna keep the car. All right, so this is gonna be uh, a cost of $10,587.48. Uh, 
cents. All right, so uh, not a bad deal. Um, at least as far as leasing options go, it, it beats the loan. It beats uh, uh, the other lease. It's just a better deal. Okay, but you're still losing ten thousand dollars, almost eleven thousand. So it's pretty close. Um, but you again, you have no car at all. So you don't get that. So let's say we want to keep the car. So let's do total cost, and um, we're going to do it with the car. All right. Um, so here's how it's, how it's going to work. We got $289.93 uh, times 36. All right. And then we have the value of the car. But this time it's not a subtraction because we leased the car again. We rented the car. Um, now we have the option to purchase. So we really like the car for whatever reason. So we're going to purchase it for $14,250, the worth of the car. All right. So $14,250. Uh, $14, All right. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this equal sign. And I'm going to put less than or equal to. And the reason why is that this is going to be the least amount of money uh, uh, because it could be actually greater. Um, and I'll show you why. So um, if we do the actual equal to part, um, we will end up spending $24,687.48. Cents. All right, so all things equal, we paid about a thousand more than the car was worth. What was the original price of the car? Um, twenty four thousand. Right, so um, about six seven hundred dollars more uh, for the car. Uh, doing it this way to to buy the car, um, but it could be greater because if you don't have fourteen thousand dollars sitting in your pocket, this is going to be another loan. So now you have to go and borrow money with interest all right so it's going to be at least twenty four thousand six hundred eighty seven dollars to buy this car if you take a loan you're going to add interest on top of that with whatever loan you get with whatever interest rate so um yeah that's probably not a good option to do it so i guess what it's saying here if you're going to lease it lease it if you're going to buy it buy it that'd probably be a good idea